Hello students, in last lecture we have studied that evidences for RNA as a genetic material and in that we have studied girer Ramstrom experiment. Then later on we have studied about the properties of DNA as a genetic material. Now in today's lecture we will see chemical stability of DNA and its information content. So students, we know that that DNA it is a stable hereditary material. It means there is some bonds or something is there in the DNA molecule which is actually responsible for the chemical stability. So in this topic, we are going to see how the chemical stability of DNA is maintained. So here, See, this is the one slide here. Now, stability of DNA double helix, it depends on different factors. So, the first one is hydrogen bonds which are present between the nitrogen bases present in nucleotides. Second one, hydrogen bonds which are present between bases and water molecules surrounding environment. The next one, base stacking interactions which are present between the adjacent bases. So, if there is a very slight variations in DNA sequence or in that nucleotide sequence present in DNA molecule that can affect the stability of the DNA double helix. For example, if there are mutations takes place, mutations are nothing but the changes in the sequence of DNA molecule or that is in the sequence of nucleotides present in DNA molecules. So these mutations which are caused due to the errors during DNA replication, it can result into the one defect we can see here and that is nothing but the mismatch repair, mismatches. And this mismatches, it forms a unstable DNA double helix. But there are some proofreading enzymes are there which have the ability to recognize these changes in sequences that is nothing but that they can recognize that mutation and they can replace that mismatches with the correct or proper nucleotide. That is nothing but this DNA molecule it has some repair mechanism if there are variations takes place. Then to gain detail insight into the DNA double helix or that DNA double helix stability that scientists they have studied the detailed structure of that DNA molecule and at the same time they have studied that thermodynamic stability of different DNA molecules by using different techniques. For example, they use the combination of physical methods such as X-ray crystallography, then they use ultraviolet melting and they use nuclear magnetic resonance that is NMR. So there are different factors as I already told in previous slide and that different factors they affect the stability of DNA double helix and in long lived organisms or which can survive for many years or from generation to generation. So this single DNA molecule it has last 100 years or more. So that is nothing but this DNA molecule it has to be present in that particular organism for many years and the information which is present in that DNA molecule that is also passed on the successive generations that is from one generation to next generation or to another generations here and this is going on from millions of years with very minor or very small changes. Therefore, we can say that here that DNA molecule it must have a great stability because it has to pass for millions of years or from generations to generations and this DNA double helix stability it is determined different factors and or we can see here bonds or interactions and there are four different types of interactions or bonds are present. The first one is here hydrogen bonding, then second one is hydrophobic interactions, then third one is ionic interactions or ionic force and fourth one is base stacking interactions. See this is the DNA molecule simply. Now here 
the it is a double stranded dna molecule which is wind around a axis here here this is the sugar phosphate backbone the later on these are the bases nitrogen bases and on the here also there are nitrogen bases are present and these two nitrogen bases they are connected with each other or they are linked with each other by a hydrogen bonds so these hydrogen bonds they are present between complementary base pairs and later on so what are these nitrogen base here and this one that is present on the same strand here they are also connected or there is a weak van der waals attraction or force is present and that is nothing but that nitrogen bases they are stacked one above the other so this is the simple structure of that dna molecule consisting of this hydrogen bonds as well as there is a van der waals attraction and forces are present here see here this is the stacking here see one above the other here and this is the cross stacking see in figure c there is a cross stacking is there or cross stacking is there so in this way that dna molecule it has the different bonds so the first factor we are going to see here that is hydrogen bonding so these hydrogen bonds these are present between the no, that complementary base pairs for example here that guanine it pairs with cytosine and adenine pairs with thymine or vice versa means cytosine can also pair with guanine or that thymine can also pair with adenine so between these complementary base pairs or whatever they get connected with each other that is with the help of this hydrogen bonding or hydrogen bonds and as we know see here there are two hydrogen bonds are present that is that, that is nothing but there are two hydrogen bonds are present between adenine and thymine or thymine and adenine and there are three hydrogen bonds are present between guanine and cytosine or cytosine and guanine and that's why it is very difficult to separate these dna strands from one or from one another because they, if there is a more presence of guanine cytosine pairs as compared to adenine and thymines so that dna molecules which has more guanine and cytosine nucleotides that dna molecule is more stable as compared to that dna molecule which has adenine number of less number of adenine and thymine pairs on the other hand these adenine and thymine pairs they are responsible for or they destabilize the double helical structures and this conclusion it was made possible by a known fact that is in each species the g content is equal to that of c content and t content it is equal to that of a content so this is called as the chargaff rules a plus g equal to that is a plus g it is equal to t plus c so although there is a weak energy is there these are able to stabilize this dna double helical structure so these hydrogen bonds found in dna molecule see here this is the nitrogen base here or we can see here this is complete nucleotide so this is adenine and later on there is a this is the adenine and thymine base pair here adenine which is a double ring compound and here thymine which is a single ring compound so both of these nitrogen bases they get connected with each other by a specific bond which is called as hydrogen bond and these are actually responsible for the stability of dna molecule so here this hydrogen bond it is the type of attractive or dipole dipole interaction which is present between an electronegative atom and a hydrogen atom which is bonded to another electronegative atom so in this case the dna hydrogen bonding is a chemical interaction that underlies and that connects the base pairing because whatever that base pairing is here it is with the help of this hydrogen bonding and these two strands of dna these two they stay together with the help of these hydrogen bonds which are present between the complementary nucleotide base pairs and as we know that complementary base pairing is that is that adenine it pairs with thymine or vice versa or that guanine it pairs with cytosine or vice versa the next one second factor is there that is hydrophobic interactions so these hydrophobic interactions these are present between the planar base pairs and that stabilize bases on the inside of the helix so they provide stability to the structure but they, there is no any contribution to the specificity so this hydrophobic interactions they stabilizes that double helical dna structure and these hydrophobic interactions 
they are very important for folding stability as well as biological activity of the dna molecule so these hydrophobic interactions these are also included in that base stacking which stabilizes that dna molecule and these hydrophobic interactions they drive that bases to the inside of the helix that is to the inner side of the helix if you see the structure of dna molecule we can say that nucleotide bases or that nitrogen bases they are inside to the dna structure here and these are that base bases stack on the top of each other and these are attracted by the van der waals attraction forces as we have seen in the first slide here so over the entire molecule this individually small van der waals forces they add up and this stabilizes the dna double helical structure so in this way that hydrophobic interactions they maintain the stability of dna molecule next one is ionic interactions so this ion ion repulsion of this negatively charged phosphate makes that dna double helical unstable but there is a presence of mg2 plus ions as well as another cationic proteins with large quantity or abundance of that arginine and lysine amino acid residues and because of this mg2 plus and cationic proteins with arginine and lysine residues they can stabilize the dna double helical structure and this double stranded helix structure therefore it can promoted by having the phosphates on outside and this phosphate it interact with the water molecule as well as counter ions for example potassium ions as well as mg2 plus ions then next one is the base stacking interactions so these base stacking interactions these are also called as the van der waals interactions and these are present between bases and these are weak but large amounts of these interactions they are very helpful for the maintaining of the stability of dna molecule so this dna double helix it is stabilized by hydrophobic effect by presenting that bases in the interior of the helix and that increases the stability so these stacked base pairs they also attract one another through this van der waals forces and therefore that dna structure can be maintain or it become stable and that stacking it also fares the conformations of the rigid five membered rings of the sugars of backbone and there are so in this way that base stacking it is also responsible for the stability of dna molecule see this is the double helical structure of dna and that is base stacking which contribute to the rigid bases stack which are present on top of one another and that purine and pyrimidines they have the same width and that hydrophobic interactions and van der waals forces they hold these bases together so that's why there is a maintenance of stability of dna double helical structure so in this way friends we have completed about this uh, point that is dna stability or stability of dna and its information content so friends in next topic we will see new point here but before that to get notifications after uploading these videos kindly subscribe this channel that is microbiology by sante santosh napte and also uh, share these videos to your friends or to your colleagues thank you